All right, hey guys, it's Miss Naughton and Coach King is going to join us here. We've just put our lecture up on biodiversity. It's something that you need to learn at home and be able to come to class on Wednesday and make sure that you can discuss. So get your pen and pencil ready, take some great notes, um, and be ready to learn a new topic about biodiversity. As you can see here, guys, the word biodiversity is broken in. We've got our prefix, which means life, and diversity, which means different. It means different life, right? Yes. And Coach King and I have a, both have plants here. I'm, I'm going to take a look at mine, Coach King. I'm going to look at mine. Wow. Oh, man, I'm looking in here. There are 10 beetles inside this plant, Coach King. Ten. 10 beetles, but only two different species. That means only two different kinds of beetles out of those 10. What, what did you get yours? I found 10 beetles, too. 10? 10. Ten, exactly ten, but I happen to have five different species of beetles. So you have five different five kinds different and species, and I only have two. So if we're going to teach you guys about biodiversity, this is a great place to start. Which one of these would you think would have more different life? Would it be Miss Naughton's or would it be my plant? We'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. I think we should tell them. Yeah, I think we should. I the the plant that has the most biodiversity is my plant. The reason why my plant has more biodiversity is because I had five different species of beetles. Even though we had the same number of beetles, I had more of a different kind. So we had the same population. Yes, we had the same population. But you had more what? I had more diversity because I had more species of beetles. Cool. So that kind of, we hope that kind of helps you understand biodiversity. This is kind of like a little microhabitat, right? Yes, it is. And we will be studying microhabitats at the end of the week, so you need to make sure you're paying close attention to this. All right. Get your pen and uh, paper ready. We're going to take some notes over uh, biodiversity. We're going to start our PowerPoint, and we'll talk about it just like we're in class. And Coach King will start that and then come join me. All right. So get your pen and paper ready. And remember... Um, if you don't get this, you need to slow it down. You can pause it or stop it at any time so you can understand. All right, biodiversity. Here's the TEAK that we're going to be studying this week. It is TEAK 7.10b. Describe how biodiversity contributes to the sustainability of an ecosystem. All right. What we have here is that biodiversity tells us the number of different organisms that can be found in an area. We have an example of a grassland here. You can see that we have several different organisms here. We have the elephant, we have the acacia tree, and we have the giraffe. We have a bunch of different species of organisms living in this area, including the plants down below. Biodiversity can include the diversity within a species, like that means different species like cats or dogs, in a population, in a community, or even in an ecosystem. And we're going to learn about all types of biodiversity in, in all of these, but we're mainly going to focus on uh, an ecosystem or a small microhabitat. Individual species or populations need a large variety of genes to increase their chances of survival. Remember that your genes you get from your parents. They are the traits that get passed on that determine how we look, how tall we get, and how whether or not we're able to... Um, um, well, you were not able to do what? What are you trying to say, Coach? Our, our talents that we have can also be what gets passed on from our parents. All right. The loss of individuals, populations, and species decrease the variety of genes needed for species and populations to adapt to changing conditions or for the new species to evolve. Basically, guys, diversity breeds diversity. So if you lose some of these, then you're going to decrease the biodiversity in the area. All right, um, having many different living organisms contributes to the sustainability and overall health of an ecosystem by increasing the amount of food and other resources that are available. And sustainability refers to 
how well we're able to maintain our resources for future generations. We can't hog up all the resources now, and so in the future when you have kids or grandkids or even great-grandkids, they won't have resources available to them. And we have to keep that in mind with the plants and animals as well. Oh, wait a minute. So, so what I'm understanding is sustainability is one of our vocab words this week, yes, right, Coach? Is. Yes, so it you, is. So you really need to make sure you understand that. Can you repeat that one more time, what sustainability is? All right. Sustainability means that we have resources available for future generations. We don't want to use them all up right now so that people in the future and animals and plants as well won't have what they need to survive. All right, thanks, Coach King. All right, changes in an ecosystem, um, an ecosystem's composition, such as the loss or decline of a species, can lead to the loss of biodiversity. So in this slide here, if you notice, there is a catastrophic event, a wildfire. So you can imagine if that would go through a forest or an ecosystem, of course we'd lose biodiversity because many of the species would be wiped out and there would be a decline of species and we need as many species as possible for us to maintain biodiversity. Each organism within an ecosystem has its own niche and recall that we used that word earlier and it tells you it's the role that an organism plays. We talked about whether it was a predator or a prey, a producer or a consumer, that's an organism's niche. That contributes to the stability of the ecosystem, how well the ecosystem is able to maintain itself. All right, um, so a niche, like last week, remember a niche is kind of like the uh, organism's job or its role. Yes. And the reason it's so stable is because does a lion have the same niche as a zebra? No, it doesn't. A lion is a predator and a zebra is a herbivore and they eat different things. And that's why the ecosystem can maintain stability because it's there one doesn't overtake the other it's it's basically it's balanced for example trees provide habitats and nutrients for birds insects and other plants animals fungi and microbes so trees are habitats this is where certain organisms live and it will provide all of their needs this would be their niche basically right yes. here uh-huh Parasites and predators can act as natural pest controls because they go ahead and take care of the population so it doesn't grow too big. So we see we have a spider here that's eating a butterfly so that there's not too many butterflies on our planet. Various organisms recycle organic materials and produce soil. Now you guys better know what this means, right? What is this? We've studied these. What is it? Think about it. I hope you said it to yourself. That's a decomposer. We have decomposers to recycle. We have a compost bin right here in the classroom yeah, that we've been showing you. This also helps biodiversity and ecosystem stability to recycle um, nutrients in the ecosystem. Okay, and the more diverse an ecosystem, the better the chance it has to withstand and recover from a natural disaster or catastrophic event. Hey, Ms. King, what's diverse mean? Diverse means different. Okay. And just to keep uh, your, in your head, natural disasters, we've heard of Hurricane Katrina when it came in and wiped out the ecosystem. Well, New Orleans is just now starting to regrow from that, where the plant life is coming back and the animal life is coming back. But if we only have one type of plant, it's hard for it to rebuild itself. So the more different types of plants and more different types of animals we have, the easier it is for the ecosystem to come back. All right, species, guys, are becoming more extinct today than any other time in history. Um, some extinctions can be contributed to natural disasters, but you know what causes most of them? Is us. You got it. You and me cause most of this human activity and we're going to talk about how we personally are threats to human activity human activity is threat to our biodiversity you're going to need to know this because it's important to know what you can do to preserve it threats to biodiversity here's the first one the first one is human generated pollution and contamination that can affect all levels of biodiversity we have to be careful where we're throwing away our trash what we're doing with our car exhaust and trying to keep our air as clean as possible. Otherwise, it's going to kill off the plants and animals and decrease the biodiversity in our ecosystems. 
All right, habitat loss and destruction is a major force in the loss of species, populations, and ecosystems. This usually occurs as a direct result of human um, activities and population growth. Believe it or not, guys, 15, 16, 17 years ago out here, none of this was really out of here. And can you imagine all the different species that got wiped out once we started building and populated? Human growth and human activity definitely causes biodiversity to decrease and become in danger. Okay, the overexploitation, overhunting, overfishing, overcollecting of a species or population can lead to its ruin. Sometimes we, we as humans have a tendency to take more than we need and we take all that we can get and that will cause our environment to lose species because we will take as many as we can, get rid of them, and then there's none left to populate the species again. All right, also, you probably heard this on the news if you watch the news, global climate change and, uh, can alter the environment condi conditions. Species and populations may be lost if they are unable to adapt to new conditions or relocate. You know, we've all heard about the polar ice caps melting, right? The polar bears are now not having a place to live. If it keeps melting, these polar bears probably aren't going to be able to adapt. So global climate is also causing it. And many people believe, and scientists believe, we are, the, we are the cause of global climate due to pollution. Okay, the next one is the introduction of a non-native species can disrupt entire ecosystems and impact the population of the native species and plants that are already there. These invaders can adversely affect native species by eating them, infecting them, or competing with them, or mating with them. Okay, and the reason why that affects our biodiversity is because they're taking away the food that could possibly be for the native species and then there's less for them to compete and win for so that they have to either move on or they'll die out if they're unable to adapt. We have an example of a non-native species. Many of you have heard of Paris Hilton. She went ahead and got herself this cute little animal and she thought it was cute as well till it scratched the heck out of her and She's like, oh, now what am I going to do? She didn't take it back to the South American rainforest where it belongs. She just let it go in the wild. And now her little pet is running around amongst the other animals, taking away the food that they possibly could be eating. All right. All right, boys and girls. Um, high five. I think they got it. I think they got we it. We hope you understand biodiversity. Now, stay tuned. Go to the, the wildlife classroom and watch a movie with the Eco Geeks eco geeks to help you better understand biodiversity. We'll see you next week and be ready. Bye-bye.